Hey, I'm glad you're back for another five-minute meditation on the Sermon on the Mount in my book, uh, What on Earth? Considering the Social Implications of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Uh, we've come to chapter 13 here in our final chapter on the Beatitude, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And this one is called uh, See You in the Morning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. Uh, Paul said in Romans chapter 12, Mourn with those who mourn. Well, I suggest two things, that we weep in this chapter, that we weep with other weepers, and that we weep with the weeper of heaven. Yeah, first of all, I think that some of the best weeping is done in the company of other weepers, don't you? And uh, let me read a paragraph or two out of my book about that very thing, weeping with those who weep. Our tears flow from a place of connectivity and complicity with the world's corruption. We may be citizens of heaven, but we live on earth and are laden with the same proclivities that, dis, uh, that disappoint our Lord and harm his people. As did the prophets, we must confess our solidarity with fellow sinners and saints and repent alongside of them. So my point here is don't mourn alone. Don't grieve alone. Do it in solidarity with other grievers and mourners. More important than that, then, I would say, secondly, is weeping, uh, than weeping with other weepers, is that we weep with the weeper of heaven. If you understand my drift, I'm talking about God. We weep in the company of him who weeps over the wreckage of the world that he loves. Why should God have to weep alone? God weeps and then invites us to join him and weep with him. You know, the Bible is clear that all three members of the Trinity are said to weep over sin, over sickness, over the suffering of the world, you know, oppression and people abusing one another. Why should God have to weep over those things by himself? And the Spirit, it says, uh, along with creation, groans over the world's chaos. And I, I suggest that we make it a three-part harmony when we join in the groan. And let me read another little portion of this chapter, a couple of paragraphs or a paragraph. Jesus, it says, is a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. And if we want to be better acquainted with him, we have to be acquainted with what grieves him most. Intimacy with God is more than memorizing theological factoids. It involves tuning into what makes him weep and then weeping by his side. And you know what Paul calls that is the fellowship of his sufferings that Paul uh, had, a, had a heart to enter into. So our, our, our weeping, it, you know, it isn't hopeless negativity but it's a precursor, I think, to, uh, to better things to come. And so our, our, ours is a hope-filled, if that's such a thing. I think it is a hope-filled weeping into which God then invites us. And uh, lastly, there's this beautiful Franciscan benediction, uh, just one line of which says, May God bless you, and I, I give this benediction to you, May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain to joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope that you will take advantage of the Sermon on the Mount and, of course, my book, but also the suggestions for interaction with other people or just personal reflection take a look for those uh, on the on the social on social media and uh, maybe that'll help you just kind of keep going forward in some of these things from this great sermon of Jesus the Sermon on the Mount God bless you